Oh, chapter 12 of the book of Acts. Now about the time Herod the king stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the church. Well, Paul won't do it no more. Now the Roman government will do it. Persecution everywhere. And he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. This is, you know, Peter, James, and John. It's that John. I mean, that James that, that's been killed. The fisherman. He was killed by the Roman government for the word of God. And because he saw it pleased the Jews. Oh. These people that won't have nothing to do with the, with the Gentiles are pleased that the Gentiles killed one of their brethren. Hey, they were pleased when, when Pilate crucified Jesus Christ. He proceeded further to take Peter also. Parentheses, important note. Parentheses in the Bible is a very important note. He proceeded further to take Peter also. Then were the days of unleavened bread. This is within a week after the Passover. It was Passover, the 14th day. I think, yeah, I think it's the first month, the 14th day. And then the next seven days was the Feast of Unleavened Bread. And when he had apprehended him, rested Peter, he put him in prison, just like the Sanhedrin did in Acts chapter 4. Peter's back in jail for the word of God. And delivered him to four quaternions of soldiers to keep him. Well, Peter must have had a power that if you got to get all these men to watch you. I had a note here. Oh, yeah. Quartarian is 16 soldiers. Four by four. So one Quartarian is four. He had four of them. 16 soldiers were watching Peter. I wonder if you heard early in, in Acts where Peter and John had escaped out of the prison and were preaching at the temple when they were looking for him. I don't know. To keep him. Intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. Uh-oh. We got a problem. We got unleavened bread and we got Easter in the same chapter within one verse of another. What's the problem? Peter, a Jew, has unleavened bread. Herod, a Roman, has Easter. Easter and unleavened bread are not the same holidays, and yet they're fall on the same day, or about the same day. That's, that's the answer. There's two different holidays here, and they show up about the... How many times have, on our calendars, have Easter fallen on the Passover, or thereabouts? And it's happened. What's the problem? Hmm? Or Christmas with Hanukkah. Some celebrate Easter. Some celebrate unleavened bread. But some will say, well, let's change the Bible. No, let's not change the Bible. So I have a footnote in here, Schofield's Bible, if I can say it. He says, Easter, G, the Passover. Now, that's a big error. Because the Passover is the lamb, it's not Esther, which has a bunch of nipples and boobies on her that lays eggs. There's a big difference between Esther and the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world. Only a moron would bring the two celebrations into one and try to put it in your Bible. Schofield, I'm sorry, you were a very bright man with a Bible, but you couldn't tell the difference. Unleavened bread? Old Testament, and including the life of Jesus Christ, that is Jewish. Esther, Easter, that is Roman. That's not hard. So during the Jewish holiday for Peter, he's in jail. Herod's going to wait after his holiday, Easter, to crucify Peter. Well, he's not going to crucify him, he's going to get out. So, 
Peter therefore was kept in prison on the holiday. Oh. Prayer was made without, outside the prison, ceasing, without ceasing, they're, they're not stopping, continue prayer of the church under God for him. Look at church under God for him. This man is in jail for the word of God. He has a death sentence over, and the church is without ceasing praying. And you're going to say that's today's church. How many Christians today, if we even care, are in another part of the country right now and have a death sentence just waiting for it to be carried out? In the name of the word of God, of course. And when Herod would have brought him forth, the same night, Peter was sleeping. Oh, look at the peace he's got. Between two soldiers. He's handcuffed to two soldiers. Now, knowing Peter with his big mouth, you know he was witnessing to these two guys. What are they going to do? Get up and leave? They can't. Bound with two chains. Somebody feared Peter. And the God of Peter. And the keepers before the door kept the prison. So Peter is in the jail. He's got two guards there he's chained to with two chains. Outside the gate, there are two other guards watching the gate. And 14 others, if this is part of the 16, 14 others are in this area. Unless these 14, you know, they had their different shifts. Because there's two inside, there's two outside, that would be four. And if that's the case, there would be four different shifts, maybe. I don't know if he had the 16 all together watching him. But the Bible does speak about four watches. That might be something interesting to study sometime. And behold, the angel of the Lord Jesus Christ in the Old Testament shows up to Peter. Came upon him. And a light shone in the prison. Oh, a light showed up for Paul. John speaks about that light. How great is his light? And he smoked Peter on the side. Raised him up. Peter, he, he's gone. He's gone. He's, he's asleep. And we find Peter in many instances where we read about him. About, he's zonked. He was a good sleeper. Light from the from Jesus Christ did not wake him up. Nor are we going to read did it wake up any of the guards. That's interesting. A light that no one sees. I said a light that no one sees. What kind of light is that? Saying, rise up quickly, and his chains fell off his hands. The angel said unto him, gird thyself, put your clothes on, and bind on thy sandals. Put your sandals on, put your shoes on. So he did. He says unto him, cast thy garment about thee, and follow me. Put away your prison clothes, and follow me. Let's go. He went out and followed him. And wist not that it was true, which was done by the angel, but thought he saw of it. He thinks he's having one of those, I'm a, you know, here comes one of the, the sheep kind of thing. I'm sleeping. Peter was a great sleeper. He's ready to die. He's ready to die for Jesus Christ. And Peter, oh, this is a great dream. When they were past the first and second ward rooms, so what do you call what we what did you call a man who was in charge of a prison? You would call him a warden, according to the 1611 Bible. They came onto the iron gate that leadeth into the city. Iron is a complete interesting study in the Bible. When opened to them of his own accord, looks like Peter opened the gate. They went out and passed on through one street 
And forthwith the angel departed from him. So he's walking through these wards. He comes to the gate, opens up the gate. They're going down the street. And then the angel of the Lord, Jesus, okay, disappears. And when Peter was come to himself, what happened? Where am I? He said, Now I know of a certainty that the Lord has sent his angel and has delivered me out of the hand of Herod from all the expectation of the people of the Jews. Who wanted Peter dead? The Jews. Herod was just an instrument, just like Pilate. And it took Peter, he's outside the street, he's in this city, wherever he is. I don't even know what it says where he is. Maybe later. And did this dawn sound? Hey, I'm free. The body, uh, Paul's going to say later, absent from the body, present with the Lord. And Peter's just like, <laughs> going home to heaven in the morning. Going home, amen. Why, what uh, on earth is going on? This ain't heaven. This is not the gold street. Turn around. That's the prison. This ain't heaven. What's going on here? Oh, the Lord must have let me out. And when he was, con when he had considered the thing, <laughs> I'm still here. He came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose surname is Mark. That's the writer of the gospel. Here he is now. What is Mark's mother's name? Mary. He's going to be mentioned in the gospel. He's going to get Paul upset one, one day. But he's going to be profitable unto, unto Paul later on, 2 Timothy chapter 4. But here's Mark. Here he is, the writer of the gospel. And where do we see him first? He's at a prayer meeting in the church for us. Apostles about to get killed. That's a great place to show up in the Bible, isn't it? And have your name in one of the Gospels of Jesus Christ. Whose name, surname was Mark. Where many were gathered together praying. And Peter knocked at the door of the gate. The damsel came to hearken. Name Rhonda or Rhoda. I don't know how you and when she knew Peter's voice, she opened not the door for gladness. Ah! We ran in and said, How Peter stood before the gate. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And they said, Thou art mad, Rhonda. But she constantly affirmed that it was even so. Then they said, It is his angel. He's dead. But verse 5, prayer was made without ceasing for the church under God for him. It is his angel. It is his spirit that's come and visit us. Little girl, you're, you're just mad. What a, what a great prayer meeting. The prayer's been answered. No, no, it hasn't. No, it hasn't. And he ain't here. He's dead now. I like that prayer meeting. But Peter continued knocking. And when they had opened the door and saw him, they were astonished. Ah! But he beckoned unto them with his hand. Shh, hold your peach. Shh, 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 shh. Quiet. And declared unto them how the Lord had brought him out of the prison. That must have been an interesting conversation because he was half asleep when he did it. Well, what happened, Peter? I was asleep. And I was out in the street. It had to have been the Lord and his angel. This is a great, interesting chapter here. I'm here. And now you guys are having a prayer meeting about me and you didn't believe I'm, I'm alive. Well, this is a great night. This is the Bible so real. Here's a bunch of people praying for a saint. He comes to their door. He's alive. How? Oh, no, hallelujah. He's a ghost. Get out of here. And show them all the things unto James. Tell them what happened. He must have witnessed what happened to James. And Fox's Book of Mars will tell you what happened. And unto the brethren. 
And he departed and went to another place. I'm getting out of here. I'm not going back to that jail. Because they're going to be looking for him. Because now as soon as it was day, there was no small stir among the soldiers. What was become of Peter? What was become of Peter? Uh, wasn't there a man between us? Yeah, Peter. And he's not here. We are in trouble. Yell to the to yell to the guards are outside the door. Hey, somebody come to this door. No, not not one. We are all in trouble. Why? What's going on? It's only the four of us. What about that man that's supposed to be in there? He ain't here. That's what the rap. Peter, this is the type of rapture. Peter's gone. You don't believe the type of cat rapture? Uh. Let's see where he says. Here's the place he said, right? Smoke Peter said, Peter. He said, doesn't say verse 8, cast thy garment about thee and follow me. Peter's gone. And when Herod had sought, turn page, for him, Peter, all right. Go down and get him. Execution day. Go get him. And found him not. He examined the keepers. And commanded that, that they should be put to death. He went down from Judea to Caesarea and there abode. Now remember those keepers at Jesus' tomb? When they came to the chief priest and said, you know, this is what... Well, we'll give you this money. You tell him that their disciples came and stole the body and we'll protect you. This is what they're protecting him from. Because the Roman rule was any soldier that had a charge of a person, a prisoner, and that prisoner escaped, you didn't lose your job and collect unemployment. You lost your life. It was the death penalty. And Herod was highly displeased with them, but tired of sight him. But they came with one accord to him, and having made Blastus, what a name, the king's chamberlain, their friend. So Blastus is one of the king Herod's main guys, desiring peace, because their country was nourished by the king's country. So they just want peace so they can live together and, you know, get whatever they want from the king and happy dookie and everything like that hunky dory bunch of bumblebees in a field of flowers Ooh. and upon a set day herod arrayed in royal apparel you've seen that mess on tv sat upon his throne and made an oration unto them he made a great speech you hear our president do that the State of the Union and that other junk and decoration before the Congress and it's just a bunch of words that don't mean nothing to make me look like someone probably wrote them for them if they had telepartners back there they probably used them big deal and the people gave a shout saying it is a voice of a God and not of a man see the small G the Romans there was all kinds of gods. Here's another god. Making this guy equal as Pharaoh. He's a ruler and he's a god. He's a god ruler. And immediately the angel of the Lord, Jesus Christ himself, smote him. Do you know someone that sits on a throne and prepares to be the voice of God? How many has there been? And Peter's long gone. This is not Peter. Peter yelled at a man and said, hey, get up. Don't you worship me. You better believe those popes are going to answer before the angel of the Lord. No, I take that back. Those popes will answer before Jesus Christ one day. If those popes do not have to answer Jesus Christ one day, Jesus Christ will have to resurrect Herod and apologize to him. And you think Jesus is going to do that? Absolutely not. 
Matter of fact, wouldn't it be great if Jesus calls all those popes up one day and lines them up and says, Herod, will you tell them what happened to you, please? And Herod, please use the scripture. That'd be interesting if Herod gets to condemn every Roman pope. That'd be interesting. Wouldn't you like to see that? Then you tell them all, go jump in the lake, hold hands, belly flops. Me, the angel of the Lord, smote him because he gave not God the glory. Uh-oh. Better be careful who you praise. And he was eaten of worms. And gave up the ghosts. He died after being eaten of worms. I guarantee that was gross. And I guarantee that hurt. I don't know what the time span was, but the worms came first. Then he died. And the and but the word of God grew and multiplied with all this persecution. Everybody seeing what happens to a man that sits on a throne, and I am God. You're dead. You know I just don't break revival because when you get an idiot that runs around this, this this world like he does right now, and they all just for fall for him. He said, well, why hasn't any of them been eating up worms and died? Because we got the completed Bible. Some Bible-believing Christian is supposed to walk up to that idiot with the hat that looks like a fish, go down with a fish string, catch that hat, and walk up to him and say, hey, buddy, this is what's going to happen to you. Will he be eating up worms? Let's see, what did Jesus say? Where the worm dieth not. According to the words of Jesus, when you're in hell, it looks like you're, you're like, kind of maggot infested. I'm not going to get the gross. But. And Barnabas and Saul returned from Jerusalem. Man, they're going back and forth. Come on, man, if they're doing all this traveling, walking, and boats, and camel, these guys were strength, they were muscular, they were husky, they weren't wimpy. When they had fulfilled their ministry and took with them John, whose surname was Mark. So Mark would be talking, they're going on their travels or they're on the boat. So, hey, can I tell you guys what happened to Peter? Yeah, sure it does. Well, that guy was put in jail. He, this is what he said about James. Oh, really? Yeah. And he's in jail. We're all praying for him at my mom's house. Yeah, good, right. He got out of jail by the Lord Jesus, by the angel. He did? Yeah, he's half asleep, but he kind of told us. Really? Now, you see what Barnabas and Saul has learned from this chapter just by taking on Mark all the interesting things? And Rhoda answers the door. Ah! What? What was it? What was it? It's Peter. What about Peter? He's at the door. And we didn't believe it. We thought it's his ghost. Oh, come on. You did not. You guys are having a prayer meeting for the guy and you think he was dead and he shows up as a guy. Yeah, we did. <laughs> really? Really? Okay. You see how the word's getting around? Mark would tell Barnabas and Saul what, what that event had happened. And now it's recorded the three men and we don't know how many people were at that house. And Peter, he's free. He's going off other places, telling other people, hey, listen, the Lord has let me out of that prison. You won't believe how he did it. I went to a prayer meeting. They didn't believe. That story's going out. And the Holy Spirit said, write that down in Acts chapter 12. I want that recorded. I want you to make sure also in Acts chapter 12 that you don't see Peter as the bulk because there's two different men. Peter never brags about himself. Oh, but this man, this Roman man will. So the word's going out 360 degrees. Barnabas and Saul and Mark are going out. It's getting active. It's getting live. It's getting well. We're halfway through the book. 